Hi there, everybody. We are going to do all of the exercises on pages 163 to 165. Um, so, if you will, get out your Grammar and Composition 2 book and turn to page 163. We had already started this. I gave you the first item. So capitalization, punctuation, and manuscript form. Put the letter in the blank that would be correct if the word or phrase would appear in a sentence. If neither word or phrase is correct, put in in the blank. Okay, so, so Chatham County Christian School. Chatham County Christian School. Well, these, this is a name. The whole thing is a name in both cases. So school is not capitalized. That should be in because you want all four words capitalized if it's a proper name. Three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. This is redundant, so we wanna choose A. Uh, AD 2017 or 2017 AC. Well, AD comes before and BC comes after, so this would be A, number five. The Honorable James Wilson Chapman. The Honorable James Wilson Chapman. Okay, well, here's the rule. And if you wanted to uh, go back and find it in your book, it's going to be in the very first chapter, I believe. But if you can, you can um, abbreviate honorable, but not after the word the. So because the word the is there, we're not allowed to abbreviate honorable. Let me find that. You'll notice the titles reverend and honorable. This is on page two of your book. May be abbreviated if used with the full name. And then there's this little note right there. The titles reverend and honorable must be written out if preceded by the. So, if there was no the, then you could abbreviate it because the rule says the titles Reverend and Honorable may be abbreviated if used with the full name. And James Wilson Chapman is the full name. But because the word the is there, you're not allowed to abbreviate Honorable. So, B is the correct answer. Okay. And then the last one, The Road Not Taken is a poem. Um, so the question is whether or not you use italics or quotes for titles of poems. And let's see if I can find that real quick. On page 33 of your book, use quotation marks to enclose titles of short stories short poems, songs, chapters, articles, and other parts of books or magazines. So short poems, it says, well, what constitutes a short poem? Well, here's the, the specifics. It says, italicize long poems of book length and long musical compositions such as operas, symphonies, and concertos. So poems of book length are not short. This is, the road not taken is only about 20 lines long, um, two roads diverge in a yellow wood, and I wish that I could travel both. Uh, that's how it begins. It's about 20 lines long. That's considered a short poem, so you put it in quotation marks. Okay? Now, going on. Punctuation. We did the first one already. So number two, the first Monday of September Labor Day is observed throughout the United States, comma, Canada, comma, and Puerto Rico, period. All right. Next, Sarah, that's a direct address. So Sarah, comma, I can't, it's a contraction, read your, uh, your writing, that's a complete thought, semicolon, your O's look like A's, apostrophes, and then you need a period, okay? 
what a great week we had at camp, comma, mom, exclamation point, because they're excited about it. All right, exercise C, we've done the first one, performing significantly different functions at emergency situations, comma, they are sent out as directed by 911 operators. Well, you know, that looks good to me. This, from they to the end, is an independent clause that can stand alone. And then the dependent clause is here. That is uh, not a complete thought. Performing significantly different functions at emergency situations, comma. That's right. So that should be a sentence. Let's look at number four. Vehicles that have ladders are referred to as fire trucks, comma. They are very useful for saving victims. Well, these are two complete thoughts. That's a complete thought, and that's a complete thought. You can't separate compl two complete thoughts with a simple comma. You need a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon. So this is a run-on sentence. It's, got, it's two sentences separated by just a comma, which is inappropriate, okay? And then the last one, Thomas Lote, who built the first fire engine in America in 1743, this should be all a dependent call. Uh, actually, who built the first fire engine in America in 1743 is in a positive. And then you should have more here to finish the thought. Thomas Lote is the subject, and we have no verb, no complement, anything. So that is a fragment. Okay? We've done the first one on this exercise. We're looking for the function of each sentence. All the italicized words need to be identified. We've got subject, verb, direct object, indirect object, predicate nominative, object of preposition, a positive, and direct address. Pearl Harbor, surfing, and pineapples are all well-known Hawaiian symbols. So Pearl Harbor, surfing, and symbols are the things that are italicized. Oh, and R. So this it will R is a linking verb, so that's going to be the verb. They are symbols since it's linking, that's a predicate nominative because symbols is a thing, and that and predicate nominatives follow linking verbs. And then Pearl Harbor, surfing, and pineapples are all subjects, so that's a subject, and that's a subject. Let's turn the page to 164. Okay, number three. Hawaii consists of eight main islands and many other smaller uninhabited islands. It is the only state composed, it is the only state composed only of islands. Okay, well that's um, two independent clauses separated by a semicolon, so let's look at the first independent clause first. Hawaii consists of eight main islands. Okay, so Hawaii is the subject consists is the verb and then of eight main islands is a prepositional phrase so this must be an object of preposition and many other smaller uninhabited islands it is the only state so it is the subject is is the linking verb state that's a predicate nominative because uh, is is a linking verb and this is the noun that follows it composed only of islands, okay. Next, the Hawaiian alphabet has only 12 letters. The English alphabet has 26 letters. Okay, so alphabet is the subject, has only 12 letters. Alphabet has letters. Has is a linking verb, so letters is a predicate nominative. The English alphabet Alphabet is subject has 26 letters, but I guess there's no italicized words there, so we don't have to worry with it. Hiram Fong, who descended from Chinese immigrants, was elected to the Senate to represent Hawaii in 1959. So to represent Hawaii is a prepositional phrase. Um, no, actually it's not. To represent is an infinitive to represent Hawaiian. Okay, so, and then it inside an infinitive phrase, represent would be the verb, so Hawaii would be the predicate nominative. Let's see what the book says. Oh no, not predicate nominative because this is an action verb. 
So we need that to be a direct object. Represent is an action verb. Okay, so there's that. Now let's go back to immigrants. Who descended from Chinese immigrants? There's a pronoun who, this is the subject of that clause. Descended is the verb from immigrants is object of preposition because from is a prepositional phrase and immigrants is the object of that preposition. And now this is within the context of this a positive clause, okay? So Hiram Fong is the subject of the main sentence. Fong was elected action verb to the Senate to represent Hawaii. Yes, yeah, so all of that is. All right, next. The only tropical rainforest in the US, in a US state, can be found in Hawaii. That's a verb. In Hawaii is an object of preposition. The aloha state. That's aloha state is italic, so that's in a positive because it's tell, making sure you're positively sure what Hawaii we're talking about. Did I miss one? The only tropical rainforest in the state can be. No, nope, that's it. Okay. The Hawaiian archipelago is over 1,500 miles long, making it the longest island chain in the world. That's the subject. That's not a very good S, I'm sorry. Is that the only one in there? Yep, okay. Hawaii has its own time zone and it does not follow daylight savings time. So Hawaii is the subject, has is the verb, zone is the predicate nominative, No, actually, has is not a, it would be a direct object. Own time zone, noun, it's own time zone. It does follow time. That's a direct object as well. So has, in this case, um, it is an action verb because it's actually doing something. It's having it. It's like owns. Has can be a helping verb. And has, like, so has been would be considered linking in function. But in this case, has is actually an action verb. Kawhi, the garden aisle, that should be an AP. Let me check that, yep. Is known, that's a verb, for its beauty, beaches, and mountains. Leilani brought Meg some macadamia nuts. That should be an indirect object, because what she brought was nuts. That's the direct object. Who received the nuts? Meg. Leilani brought nuts, and who received it? Meg, from a visit to Oahu. All right, exercise E. We've done number one, number two. The children attacked the pizza like they hadn't any food all day. Well, attacked with the T does not exist. According to God's word, we should not sit or set or sit our affections on things of this earth. Well, we're setting them. Um, please take me that dish that is on the table or bring me the dish it's bring so you get rid of take you take something away if it's coming to you it's bring if it's going away from you it's take paul drank or drunk a glass of milk with his cookies paul drank now that I'm going to look up where you find that. This is a section called Using Principal Parts Continued. It is on page 82. Drink is the present tense. Drank is past. Have drunk is the past participle. Paul drank. 
Uh, you might say Paul has drunk a glass of milk, perhaps, but there's no has there. So this is Paul drank a glass of milk. Okay. We must set our priorities in line with God's principles. Um, let Timothy take you to work and I will bring you home. Take goes away from me. Bring brings you towards me, pulls you towards me. So we're going to take to work, bring home. We cheered when the flag was raised. Rose is past tense. Um, is that on the same? Uh, uh, uh. Yes, rise. Now, uh, it's not irregular. So, Ray, so it's um, raise, raised, has raised, or have raised. So that's how the raised works. We cheered. Or we did. did Jason bust or break his arm when he fell? Break. We don't say bust. After we ate a hearty breakfast, we sat down to take the test. All right. Number F, exercise F. Number two. The delighted laughter of the child was heard. Laughter was heard throughout the house. Whoever wishes to join the marching band should meet in the gym after school. So get rid of wish. Either Emily or the boys are cooking either. Oh, no, is cooking because either it's one or the other. It's not both. It's going to be either Emily or it's going to be potentially the boys. Actually, let's start that over. What we have here is two potentials. Emily is one person. The boys are multiples. Whoever's closest to the verb wins. So either Emily or the boys are. If, the, if it was either Emily or Sam, it would be is. But since boys is plural and it's closest to the verb, we choose are. Okay. Um, Ethan and Nate, that's both of them together, were the pitcher and catcher for the game. There is or are two socks missing from the laundry. Well, how many socks are there? There are two. Those are plural. So there are two socks missing. And then the team that I cheer for, team is singular, is the Cornerstone Cougars. All right. Keep going. Pythons, that's multiple, are non-poisonous snakes, but they can still be deadly. Bacon and eggs is my favorite breakfast. It's one dish. So we, it is. Bacon and eggs is one dish. And that dish is my favorite breakfast. Mathematics is singular. So it was Jordan's favorite subject in school. It's singular. Mathematics is one course. All right. G, using nouns. Put brackets around noun clauses, parentheses around gerund phrases, and underline infinitive phrases, and above each clause or phrase, write how it's used. Subject, direct object, predicate object, object of preposition, or positive. Okay, so the first thing to do is find the, the phrase or clause and put the appropriate uh, markings around it. And then the second thing is going to be to define its function. Okay, but we did one already. Dexter enjoys skiing in winter and snorkeling in summer. Skiing, in, uh, skiing is a gerund because it's a, it's a verb form um, ending in ing that's being used as a noun. Dexter enjoys tacos. Tacos is clearly a noun, isn't it? Well, skiing in winter, snorkeling in summer, those are two different gerund phrases. So it says, Put parentheses around gerund phrases, so we're going to do skiing in winter, snorkeling in summer, 
and then we know that if it's an action verb here so that means this has got to be direct object direct object there there's two it's a compound direct object okay number four the best idea to raise money for the senior trip was having a bake sale after the concert having a bake sale after the concert all right well that is in parentheses because having is an, a noun or a verb form with ing that's called a gerund okay and then um we've got something else here the best idea to raise money for this the senior trip was um so this is interesting you underline this because it is an infinitive phrase it's to raise it's a verb that begins with the word to to raise money for the senior trip okay and it is in a positive because the subject is idea and then we're describing the idea with another noun. So best idea, what idea? To raise money for the senior trip. Okay, that's how that works. To eat in a healthy manner is an infinitive. Eat is a verb form with the word to before it. That all together is the subject. Cramming for a test. That's a gerund because it's a verb for cram, form cram, ending in ing that's being used as a noun, the subject of the sentence. To trust God in all things was. To trust is an infinitive because it's a verb form preceded by to. To trust God in all things, that whole phrase is the subject of this sentence. Something was George Mueller's plan. So that's a subject as well. Why is sneezing loudly in a quiet room so funny? Sneezing loudly in a quiet room is, um, sneezing loudly is a gerund phrase. In a quiet room is a prepositional phrase. Um, is funny is the verb. So um, sneezing loudly is funny. Subject. See that? It's a question, so you gotta move it around, but sneezing loudly is funny. That's a predicate adjective, funny is by the way. All right. That she sat and waited at the DMV. This is gonna be a noun clause. Did not make Polly happy. So this whole thing that she did is the subject. Um, that's that's a noun clause, and then did make is the verb. Polly is um, the did make. Oh, that's a act. So this is a direct object. Yeah. Okay. And then Ian decided that he would exercise every day. This is a noun clause, and it's a clause and not a phrase because it's. Uh, there's a subject and verb. He would exercise. That's like saying he will exercise. He would exercise. So Ian decided something. That thing is a direct object. Okay, that's how that works. All right, now we've got to check nominative and objective case pronouns on this one. We've done the first one already. To whom did you tell the uh, sell the antique chair? Well, two is a prepositional phrase. There are starts a prepositional phrase. Prepositional phrases have objects of preposition. This should be objective case. Whom is the objective case pronoun? Them or those are the students who made honor roll. Well, this is a demonstrative pro, uh, pronoun because you're, you're demonstrating. It's those people over there. You're demonstrating who it is, okay? You don't use them. You use those. I'm going to turn to that. On page 45, 145, sorry. Let's see if I can get you there. Page 145. Pronouns and their uses. Here are all the types of pronouns. Demonstrative pronouns point out the person or thing referred to. This, that, these, and those. Notice what's not there in that list. 
them is not there. So that's why. We don't, them is not a demonstrative pronoun. Each of the hens is sitting on her or its own eggs. Well, we know that a hen is a female, so we're going to use her. Next, each, let's see, the, the pictures were painted by the twins, she, her, he, him, by the twins. This is an appositive. The appositive always takes on the case of the word that it, or the noun that it's following. So by the twins is an objective case, twins is objective case, would be objective case because twins is the object of the preposition. So we're looking for words that are in this list here. Him and her, get rid of she and he. Okay, next. Um, would you object to me or my helping with the baskets? Well, you recall, helping with the baskets. Helping is a gerund. It's a, it's a verb, help, to help is, is to do something. Ending in ing used as a noun, would you object to me helping with the baskets? It, the rule is a pronoun preceding a gerund is possessive, meaning ownership. So we get, we get rid of me because it's supposed to be my helping with the baskets. Ownership, my. Antonio and either she or her designed the set for the play. Antonio and this word, whichever one it is, is the subject, the compound subject designed is the action verb. So subjects and predicate nominatives are nominative case. So we're looking for the word that's in there. He, she, it. She is in there, so we've got to get rid of her. Both of the children were hurrying to get their or his coats. Well, both means at the same time. Both were to get their coats. And then we've got us or we book club members sponsored a rummage sale to aid the children's ministry at our or we church. Well, our church, clearly. We doesn't even make sense, does it? That's ownership. The church belongs to us. But this one, we're looking for the one that can be a subject. Nominative case pronouns can be subjects and predicate nominatives. I, you, he, she, it, we, book club members. So we got to get rid of us. My grandpa, he, or my grandpa served during the Korean War. Well, we're not supposed to have a redundancy or a double subject. So my grandpa and he, he's not necessary. And then it was Kayla and either her or she, who or whom we're talking. Okay, well, Kayla is the subject. No, I'm sorry. Let's see, Kayla and it was Kayla. So that's going to be the uh, predicate nominative. So that means that she or her should be a predicate nominative. That would be she. So let's get rid of her. And then the next is a clause all its own. Who we're talking? Subject, verb, and then. Um, Talking would be a gerund, which is a noun, so that would be a, a predicate nominative. So the subject, which one can be subject? Nominative case. Who and whoever are nominative case, so let's cross out whom. All right? Now, to prove that you got to the end, I want you to circle the H on exercise H. That'll be uh, how I know that you made it all the way to the end. We are finished with that page. So let's... Um, Let's get those um, corrected and uploaded tonight. Now remember, if you did not turn in um, the initial trip through those three exercises yesterday, you can't do them today. So um, it, they're already turned off and I'm sorry, but I can't open it back up for you because I just gave you the answers. You can get credit for having done the, um, the second part, the, the review, but you can't get credit for the introduction one, okay? I'm sorry about that. Love you. I miss you. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.